DS was still under the Citroen branding, you might remember they made a car called the Citroen DS3 Racing. They made it back in 2010 and it was the first car that had come from Citroen Racing and they were the people that built Sebastian Loeb's WRC car at the time, so they knew how to make a good car. Had a 1.6 litre four cylinder turbo engine with 204 brake horsepower and 203 foot pounds of torque. Nought to 60 was 6.5 seconds and the top speed was 143 miles an hour. Also had bigger brakes, bigger wheels, better tyres, lowered suspension and a slightly wider track at the front and the back. So it was quite a different car to the normal Citroen DS3. Now that car was a limited edition car. Citroen only made about 2,400 there, thereabouts. And the convertible one, the Cabriolet, they only made 100 of worldwide and then they only made 10 that came to the UK. Just 10. Now when DS split from Citroen at the beginning of 2016, DS decided that they wanted to do something sporty again. This is that car, it's called the DS3 Performance and it's a lowered, wider, faster, more powerful version of the normal DS3. So this car has a 1.6 litre, four cylinder turbocharged engine, a bit like the one that was in the old Citroen DS3 but it's got 210 horsepower and 221 foot-pounds of torque. Nought to 60 is 6.5 seconds and the top speed is 143 miles an hour. But whereas the old Citroen version used to get 44 miles per gallon, this one gets 52. Compared to the normal DS3, this is 15 millimeters lower, it's 26 millimeters wider at the front and 40 millimeters wider at the rear, that's the rear and front track. And the brakes, they're 323 millimeter Brembo brakes, ventilated discs, so they're really, really powerful. And they're inside 18 inch wheels with Michelin Pilot Supersport tires, so really, really grippy tires. One really crucial difference between this and the old Citroen car is that this one has a Torsen limited slip diff at the front, like the 208 GTI Peugeot Sport we tried sometime last year. The original Citroen car didn't have that, so one of the complaints at the time was that it would understeer in the wet and you couldn't get the power down properly. With this, the diff should resolve that. The brakes, like I said, are really, really powerful Brembo brakes. At times, they haven't got quite the stopping power that I'd want, but for a small car like this, actually, most of the time, unless you're on a track or something, you're not gonna need much more braking performance. They are really, really good brakes, and the fact that they're ventilated means that Actually, if you keep using them really, really hard, they're not going to overheat and start to go a bit spongy. The gearbox is a six-speed manual gearbox. There's no option to have an automatic or a DSG gearbox. A six-speed manual is all you get. And for the most part, it's a really, really good gearbox, actually. At times, I have struggled between second and third gear because it just doesn't always feel like you know what gear it's going to go into. But for the most part, it's a really, really good gearbox. The steering is really, really nice as well, actually. Some higher speed corners, you start to, if you do a direction change, a quick direction change, the, the response isn't quite there in, in the way that you'd hope, but for the most part, it's a nice steering system and you know where the front tyres are going. The tyres have got loads and loads and loads of grip. It reminds me again of the 208 Peugeot Sport that we drove a few months ago. It was so pointy and so direct. It's got the same tyres and it's got that same diff and the diff as well makes such a difference. In the wet, you start to put your foot down in a normal car without a diff, a powerful front wheel drive car, and the wheels will just start to, to spin up. In this, you can just feel it, find grip that otherwise you wouldn't be able to find. It's a really, really good system and I'm really glad they put it in this car. Then there's the engine. 210 horsepower, 221 foot-pounds of torque, and it is rather rapid. Some of the normal DS3s are fairly quick already. They'll kind of do mid sevens to 60. This will do 6.5 to 60 miles an hour. For a small car, that is really, really quick and it feels quick. You've got to wait a bit for the turbo to wake up. So at around two and a half thousand RPM is when it starts to get into its stride. But it's a really, really torquey engine. The turbo is really, really nice. So. When you do get it in the power, it just it just flies. And particularly as well on the motorway, that torque is really, really useful. In fifth or sixth gear, you can just put your foot down and you can gently feel it surge and then really, really get into its stride. 
What surprises me is that for a turbocharged engine, it holds its power all the way to the red line. The red line is about 6,200 RPM, but it pulls all the way to 6,200 RPM. It doesn't die at sort of like five and a half as I, I was expecting it to. There aren't that many differences in terms of looks between the performance and the normal DS3. There's a special GT pack that gives you uh, black wing mirrors, a black roof and black wheels, but you can just get it looking pretty much like a normal DS3. The only clue you might get are the fact that the tires are quite a bit lower profile and there are a few little DS performance badges dotted around on the outside. Inside, again, it's very, very similar to the normal DS3. I think perhaps that's one thing that people might be disappointed with. It doesn't feel very different. But the DS3's normal interior is a nice place to be anyway. So although it isn't that different, it's still a nice place to be. There's also real carbon fibre on the steering wheel. Real carbon fibre, and I have checked that, it is real carbon fibre. And you've got these really, really nice bucket seats as well that are gorgeous and hold you really, really nicely. Would I buy a DS3 Performance? My answer has to be yes, because I think it represents a better value car than some of the normal DS3s. A normal DS3, you can spec up to more than 20,000 pounds, perhaps even 22 if you really, really tried. And yet this car is 20,995 pounds. So yes, I would buy one in theory, but then the choice would be 208 GTI Peugeot Sport or a DS3 Performance. That would be a very, very interesting decision.